Uh, the Prime Minister today talked up Britain's growing links with rebel forces inside Syria and promised more support for them. Speaking as the United States announced it is to send two Patriot air defense missiles to Syria's neighbor Turkey, as well as 400 American troops, David Cameron insisted that more needed to be done to back the groups who are rapidly becoming a coherent opposition. All options, all options should be considered in order to help the opposition and in order to enable greater support for the protection of civilians. I think it is important that we do this. I want a very clear message to go to President Assad that nothing is off the table, uh, that further support, further work, further help with the opposition, who are now better formed, better organized, better coordinated, is robustly on the table. The Prime Minister, but tonight Channel 4 News can reveal that rebel forces could be behind the latest atrocity in the Syrian civil war and not pro-government militia, as was reported earlier this week. The alleged massacre took place in the western Alawite section of Agrab, northwest of Homs in the north of Syria. Several hundred villagers, who were all Alawites, the same sect as President Assad, were reportedly crammed into a large house after rebels attacked the town on the 2nd of December. The rebel version of events is very different. They say government militia imprisoned and killed up to 250 people. Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, is the first independent journalist to get into the area. He's spoken to eyewitnesses who escaped the town and has this exclusive report. Into the badlands of central Syria, where some of the worst massacres of this war have taken place. A wrong turn here can mean being arrested, kidnapped or worse. So an escort's vital. We're told to follow one car and then another. A journey of a few miles direct takes almost an hour. Finally, we reach Akrab, a small place, 9,000 Sunni, 2,000 Alawite. We spoke to three people who'd escaped the town, all are Alawite, speaking in government areas. All spoke completely separately in different places None knew we'd interviewed the others and no government official was present. Their stories corroborate each other in detail, as do those of many others we spoke to off camera. They completely contradict the version of Akrab which has gone global, largely from rebel war propaganda websites. All sides agree Akrab was attacked by rebels on Sunday, December the 2nd, but our eyewitnesses say Sunni rebels took hundreds of Alawite civilians as prisoner. They had long beards and sometimes you couldn't quite understand what they said. They were not dressed in the normal way. At that point gunfire from the direction of Akrab forced us to move. All say the rebels came from the direction of Alhula, just five miles over these hills at the edge of town. It's the site of a massacre of 108 people in May, and it is a rebel stronghold. And here the they were wearing black ski masks. They took our phones and car keys. They forced us out of our homes and set fire to them. I hope God burns them like they burned our homes. Hundreds of Alawites escaped the fighting to surrounding villages, but our witnesses say up to 500 were held prisoner by rebels after the attack. Held here in this red building where officials believe hundreds may still be held and they're trying to get them free. We would ask for food and they wouldn't give us food. Other villages would send us food, but they would, they would take it for themselves and not give it to us. We asked for water, they wouldn't give us water. The little children with us started crying for food and water, so the mother, mothers had to beat the children to silence them because they asked for food and water. water too much. How do I do They tried to convince us to hand over the women to take them to Al Hula. We didn't do that because we didn't trust them. It went on for nine days, and then from across town on Monday came a delegation including Akrab's mayor and the Imam. They wanted to try and free the women and children. We said either we all go out together, including the Sheikh and the mayor, or we all die together. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, they all separately described 
three truckloads of prisoners somehow making it out along the road to Tauna village and safety. A fourth truck left but never made it to the village. That truck went to rebel held Alhula instead and there an unnamed woman and boy apparently speaking under duress told rebels that pro-government militias, not the rebels, took them prisoner. Fighting prevented us entering Akrab but from where we stood we could see that the house everybody said they were kept in appears intact as does much of the town. Further, rebel YouTube postings from December the 2nd, the date of the assault, make no mention of hundreds of prisoners here. Why ignore a propaganda coup day after day? And why after Tuesday are there no pictures of the bodies or burials on rebel postings? There are in effect then two stories here. First of all, it's corroborated by both sides that a large number of civilian Alawite villagers were taken prisoner in a crab. They were held and then a number at least were released. But what happened after that? If there was a massacre, how did it happen? Who did it and why? At the town hall in Hama, the nearest city, officials said they were negotiating to end the prisoner's ordeal. They say it's still going on. They believe the Imam and the mayor and many others have been killed. The only independent witnesses to make it to the prisoners were the Red Crescent and they have declined to speak to us for some days. Today there was more fighting in the town and when we visited the call to prayer echoed eerily over a largely deserted town. There are people on the streets we could see them, rebels perhaps, but who knows, a crab still holds its secrets. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, Accra.